Many of us believe that the world in which we live in is not what we intended it to be. Many of us wish that this world were a better place. Look around you and you will see the faces of many unhappy people. They are hungry, they are poor, and many die young. And they have no orientation in their lives because someone had disturbed, had disrupted their destiny. Think about the story, the ancient Chinese. They were harassed by Mongolians. So they said, you know what? We need internal peace. So they built a wall, the Great Wall of China, which people visit from around the world every year. And this was 300 years before Christ was born. It is the highest wall and became a UNESCO heritage center. By having built the wall, the Chinese Emperor Huan believed that no one would ever again penetrate to disturb their internal peace. So they only had guards at the entrance of the place. But when soldiers came, infantry enemies came, they did not need to climb the walls. They just bribed the guards who collected money and opened the gates for the soldiers to enter. And this Chinese beautiful city and wall had been invaded in 100 years several times, making the point that they spent money to build walls very high and did not spend time and energy to build the character of those who will watch over the city. It shows the superiority of character over the great Chinese wall. A second example, we can think about Genoa. Only two years ago, just there in Italy, a bridge very long in meters and high just collapsed. People died. Many lost their environment and their assets, their cars and so on. One of the world's first best footballer was involved in this. The bridge is repaired again, but something had happened. An architect had put out a drawing. Engineers had built the bridge, but they had cut corners. And officials who knew what was involved had kept quiet because they had taken some money. The bridge collapsed. Lives were lost. Do we need to go far? 2008 to 2010, the world's financial crisis, it happened. Lehman Brothers collapsed. Arthur Anderson as an audit firm collapsed. Many banks collapsed. People were scampering for world money and so on except for what we experienced recently, the terms of the COVID harassment, which is just a virus, the financial collapse had been one of the greatest for such a long time within a century. But the financial collapse was not caused by money that was changing color, or by the rains that were falling from heaven, or by winds that were blowing here and there, or by the sunshine that they didn't come out. The financial collapse was caused by human beings who decided to truncate and undermine a system for personal good. They took money, they hid information, they doubled the books, they undermined everything undermineable, and the world collapsed, and only one God knows about the millions of those who lost jobs, small or big. We need not think too far. Come around us here, Berlin, an airport is being built in Schoenefeld. And this airport will be opened many, many years after and postponed just because the original costs of the airport had been changed. First time, second time, third time, and its opening had continued to wait. And the airport in Tegel has been overpressed and overpressured by the demands of needs of transporters. Again, the ethical question. It is time for humanity to rise up and to wake up 
Because the question we often ask is, why is the world so bad as it is? Why are things not happening as they should? And who's going to change? How are we going to bring the new world of our dreams that people can live in safety and happiness? That children can wake up and laugh and smile to the stars? That adults and old people can walk hand in hand with stick, thanking their creator and who'd made them, and that our environments can be so peaceful? Why is it that the world's so bad? This is the point where education comes in. Because education is that element, educo, educavi, educatum. That leadership quality that trains me to be responsible. To know that I exist, but not only I, that there is a we. To think the larger picture, the common good, the common good which made Socrates to sit down and to bring young people together. Of course, he was murdered, he was killed. Reason, he is poisoning the minds of the youth by teaching them virtue. But virtue is that which lies in the middle. That's the balance all of us are seeking for. Not going to one extreme or to another extreme, but for looking for a balance of mind and body and soul and connecting to the environment, all of which has been rounded up in a special area in education we call ethics. Nelson Mandela, who doesn't know his name, he left this world over 90, spending 27 years in prison fighting apartheid, a system that was completely contradictory and antithetical to human life and human dignity. Nelson Mandela said, you don't need atom bombs or nuclear bombs. You don't need them to destroy the world at all. You just need to undermine the quality of education and to ensure that you give people knowledge, inform them without building the character and the society is gone. What do we see everywhere? Brings me to a man, a Nigerian man, an African man, an Asian man, a European man, an American man, who had a friend. And his friend said, hey man, you know what? I'm not very healthy and I need a doctor. And I hear your son is a medical doctor. I want to go to him. And he told him, hey Ben, don't go to my son. Why can't I go to your son? He's a specialist. No, no, no. I know how he got his certificate. He forged it. He, does, he cannot kill you. He will kill you. But this is the point when education is transmitted to humanity without quality, without character, without virtue, without that which makes education what it must be. Leading C.S. Lewis, famous author and writer, to say that education without character creates the best devils. Because I know, I have it in my hands. But then the quality of that which makes us rehumanize and stand for life and stand for that which makes authentic living and authentic existence that which it must be is lacking. Education, ethics education. We pass through schools, we go through families, we go through societies and we come out with value orientations that distort the entire orientation and changing the word W-E. Just turn the W. It means M-E. Me, me, me. Nothing about we. Nothing about the collective good. Nothing about the common good. And so the crisis now starts. Look right, look left, just because it is all about me. Talk politics. Talk ego. Talk power. Talk greed. Talk acquisition. Go to any of the professionals. And all these pass often through institutions of education. 
whether it's on the elementary or in the secondary or in the university or in the post. But education is that which makes character. And one can think about a great writer called Shakespeare. The fault is not in your stars. The fault is in you. And there was this great man who ran Porsche, a car people like to drive. And the other one who ran BMW, a car people call, be my wife. BMW, what do you really say? XCO. You know what? I hire people with character, not people with skills. Because the skills you can have, and many of us have the skills, but character is that which makes you to endure. And now the challenge, the challenge for each of us, the challenge for the institutions that train people, for the governments that legislate, for the young people who pass through the universities and places of centers of learning, and for those who are professionals who emerge from them. The challenge to ask myself, now that I know, what is that upon which my knowledge stands? If only we could ask that question. Do I live for something? Am I willing to die for something? What do I stand for? Is my life just there? You know, come see, come ça. C'est la vie. Share, you know. As it comes, it goes. I want to end because I have time to talk to my audience. And I have a message to sell. And this message is about the evidence and the fact that only those with character survive and lead our world to the next level. And what we call character is value-oriented, ethical thinking and ethical living. Because here was a man, a story, big empire, successful businessman, seven sons. He was getting old, over 70. He was getting weak. I had to hand my property, my big business, to someone who can take it to the next level. So he told his sons, I know all of you. Please just relax. I won't hand my factory over to you. He called members of his staff. Can you please come for a meeting? All gathered. I'm looking for the next CEO who will take over this company from me. And one of you will be that person. Ooh, who would ever think? One of you will be that person because one of you has the talent and the ability. But please, if you think so, of course, ambition. CEO, big money. They put out their names. And he gave each and every one of them a seed to plant. What was in the seed? Please plant the seed, nurture the seed, grow this seed, water it and sunshine it, come back in a year with the plant, and I will, from one of you, make an appointment who will be my next CEO and my successor in the business. So they went home. One of them was Jim. Jim came home, told his wife what had happened. Every day he pours water, looks after the plant. His wife supports him, but his plant was not growing. And he kept on wondering, what is it? I'm a failure. Oh my God, the world has come to an end. The plant was not growing. First month, second month, third month, sixth month, a year was coming nearer. The plant was not growing. It was just in the plant port where he had put it. And when he met his friends once in a while, they said, oh, you can't believe my plant is growing very well. It's really, you know, Gedayan. Anyway, D-Day. They brought each the plants to the stage. And the CEO came and said, oh, fantastic, gorgeous, wonderful color. Big plants, palm trees, all colors. They had developed out of the seed. They received all sorts of plants. And there was Jim with a pot, no plant, nothing in it. And the CEO goes to the audience and picks Jim and say, this is my next successor and CEO. Each and every one of you received a seed, but what I gave you was a seed that I boiled that, that could never grow as a plant.
But what did you do? You went and changed it and put another seed to grow. And then you've come out now with fake seeds. Only him was courageous, had character to stand for a plant, for a seed that was not going to grow. He gave me back what I gave to him. That's the next CEO. Do we understand why character makes the difference? Why today in our world, when we look at all the various professions, engineering, IT, think about the dark net, why we are doing all sorts of things in positive activity towards technology and its improvement. Some people are in the dark world, undermining all that, fraud stars of early means. Think about the banking industry, where people have to deal with people's trust and money and how some are undermining it. Or we think about medicine, and you can go to any of the professions, including education, in universities, where sexual harassment becomes a way of life where someone has to clone the thinking and thought of another writer, another author, and just change the name and put your own name, what we call research on ethical behaviors, and one can count them on and on. It is a world that we ask about. How can this world be better, and who is going to make it better? The answer is clear. There is no sustainable future without ethical and value-oriented ingredients. Here is the point. This is our future, and that is the challenge. And each and every one of us can take a step back and add value, value that can last. This is the message. Thank you.